welcome to Everything Economics. We study microeconomics, macroeconomics, and every other type of economics here. Welcome back everyone. This is part 5 of the chapter, The Monetary System. The book is Brief Principles of Macroeconomics, 5th edition by N. Gregory Mankiv. In this part, we will study money creation, how money is created in an economy. The money supply is affected by the amount deposited in banks and the amount that banks loan. Deposits into a bank are recorded as both assets and liabilities. The fraction of total deposits that a bank has to keep as reserves is called the reserve ratio. Loans become an asset to the bank. So this means that the money supply is affected by how much deposits people put in the banks and how much loans the bank gives out. So when there are deposits into the banks, it means the money is coming in the banks. And when the deposits, uh, when the bank makes loan, it means the money is going out. So deposits into a bank are recorded as both assets and liabilities assets when the bank is giving out loans it becomes a bank's asset when the bank is giving out loans and liabilities whenever people are putting money in the bank in the form of deposits that's a liability on the bank because the bank has to pay that amount to the customer as we will see in a moment this process of putting deposits in the bank and banks giving out loans is the process how money is created. It's pretty interesting in economics uh, because uh, the amount of deposits that a bank has has a direct impact on how much money it creates. And another th interesting thing is how commercial banks create money as well in the form of loans. So the important thing here is loans, how money is created uh, through uh, commercial banks when they give out loans. So money creation, you can in simple words uh, think it in terms of loans. When central bank, uh, when the commercial banks give out loan, they are creating money. Another definition that we need to understand here is the reserve ratio. So the fraction of total deposits that a bank has to keep as reserves is called the reserve ratio. So for example, if there are thousand dollars in a bank as deposits it cannot give out all of those thousand dollars because the central bank requires that some of the deposits are kept as reserves so let's say the central banks uh, tells the commercial banks uh, that they have to keep 10 percent reserves it means that out of those thousand hundred they have to keep as reserves in their bank they cannot give it out and they can give out loans to the maximum amount of 900 that is 90 percent so here 10 percent is the reserve ratio that the banks are required to keep this can be different for different countries at different times uh, the banks the central banks they uh, are the ones who decide this uh, rate and finally loans become an asset to the bank which I've already discussed here the loans are assets because the loan the uh, customers they have to give the loans back so they are kind of an asset for the banks and similarly the liabilities we have also discussed the liabilities are uh, the what do you call them? Deposits that the bank receives from customers. All right, these are the basics. Here uh, we have talked about assets and liabilities, reserve ratio, how loans become assets, how deposits become liabilities, how uh, money is created. That we will discuss in detail in the next slide. So this T account shows a bank that accepts deposits, Q 
keeps a portion as reserves and lends out their rest. It assumes a reserve ratio of 10%. Here, the bank name is, um, let me get the bank, then, is First National Bank. On the left side, we have assets. On the right side, we have liabilities. And this is called a T account. You can see that by the shape of this account. And since uh, uh, you guys, uh, maybe you guys have studied uh, accounting or maybe not, but I'll make it simple. Just remember that on the left side, we already always have assets. Uh, and on the right side, we have liabilities in a T account. This is just a simple way of keeping records in uh, normally in banks and other places where uh, they have to keep records like in the firms and other places so let's start the process of money creation let's see how money is created first there are hundred dollar deposits now after that the reserve ratio is 10 percent this means that out of those hundred dollars the bank can only give out ninety dollars as loans it has to keep ten dollars as reserves so the right side this is the right uh, right side is equal to the left side that is a rule it always has to be equal here on the left side we have assets dollar hundred on the right side we have liabilities those are also dollar hundred so the liabilities uh, liability is the deposits because the bank has to pay those uh, deposits back to uh, the bank owes those deposits to the customers and these reserves and these loans they are the bank's assets now what is happening is that once a deposit is made of dollar hundred out of those hundred ninety goes out uh, into the economy as loans so how much money is created in this process? This is the first process. Ninety dollars uh, of money, ninety dollars uh, amount of money has been created. Now let's move on to the interesting part: how money is created. Uh, I mean, the further processes. After uh, the money, uh, the loan of ninety dollars is given out assume that there is person A who gets this loan that person uh, what he does is he goes to a travel agency and buys a ticket for dollar ninety so now person B has that money dollar ninety and here we have uh, the person B is not actually a person it's a firm a travel agency which has those dollar ninety and normally what would they do is they would put that dollar ninety as deposits in a second national bank uh, this can be any bank uh, I mean uh, it could be Chase or some other bank and uh, now uh, the second national bank it has deposits of ninety dollars here ten percent is the reserve ratio so out of those ninety dollar nine they have to keep reserves and dollar eighty one they further give out this as loan again total liabilities are 90 total assets are 90 left side is equal to the right right side and more money has been created here it was 90 and now 81 dollars more loan and more money has been created so total money creation in this two processes is 90 dollars plus 81 but the thing is all right, uh, first let's total this. Uh, this is 171. Now, what do you think? Will the process stop here? No, it would not. The process will go on uh, further and further. Once this uh, $81 has been given out as loan, it will move to third bank and then to fourth bank and then to fifth bank until and unless no loan is left. Oops, uh, I forgot about this arrow, but it doesn't matter because I've ma made my own arrows here and here to uh, 
to explain it so forget about this error right here it uh, it's the same error where the loan is going out as deposits into a second bank so it all started with dollar hundred deposits but how much money will those dollar hundred create with a reserve ratio of 10 percent that's the important part i mean here i've talked that the money will go from one bank to second to third to four to fifth but now we are going to talk about the multi multiplier how much money will eventually be created so the money multiplier is the reciprocal of the reserve ratio money multiplier basically tells us how much money will eventually be created by initial deposits the formula is m is equal to 1 over r with a reserve requirement uh, here we uh, the reserve requirement we have changed it to 20 percent or 1 over 5 the multiplier is 5 so the reserve ratio is 20 percent when you have 1 over 20 percent in 200 you get 5 as money multiplier this simply means that with an initial deposit of dollar hundred money multiplier multiplied by money multiplier it means total money created will be 500 and in our example the reserve ratio was 10 percent and the initial deposit was dollar hundred so money multiplier will be 10 just use the formula uh, which is basically 1 over 10 into 100 and how much money will be created money created is equal to initial deposit into money multiplier which is 10 in our case so the total money created in our previous example would be dollar 1000 Uh, you can also see it here increase in money supply is equal to initial deposit 100 into money multiplier 500 is equal to 500 sorry uh, 5 is equal to 500 so that's how much money uh, will be created in this example with r is equal to 20 percent in our example r is equal to 10 percent the money multiplier was 10 initial deposit was 100 into 10 is equal to total money created with initial deposit of uh, 100 was dollar 1000 this is the same example here we have the original uh, deposit of dollar 100 the first national lending dollar 90 the second national lending dollar 81 the third national lending uh, the third bank which will receive dollar 81 will give out dollar 72.9 as loans and keep the other amount as uh, reserves and this process will go on and on and on until the total money supply will be dollar 1000 and how this dollar 1000 was created uh, initial deposit into money multiplier which was initial deposit of 100 into money multiplier of 10 all right this is how uh, this is a simple method of how you can uh, get the total money supply created uh, when you have reserve ratio when you are given reserve ratio and initial money uh, in initial deposits but you can also calculate it uh, through this uh, process which is which would be pretty long and useless uh, but you can try it you can experiment it you will uh, not get to, to this exact amount but you will reach to an uh, estimate of this amount very near to this amount because this will go to infinity so that's it uh, that's the fourth part how money is created we started with the deposits and uh, those deposits were given out as loans and the, this process the given uh, giving out of uh, uh, the money the deposits as loans is the process uh, through which money is eventually created so I hope you understand it if you don't understand it you can ask the question in the comment section in the in the next part we will move on to the moon uh, to more monetary policy related stuff and uh, uh, those are also directly linked to this part so uh, i'll see you in the next part take care bye